Hello, today we'll be going through practice questions 111 to 120 for the CompTIA Sizer Plus exam. Let's begin. An organization's threat intelligence team notes a recent trend in adversary privilege escalation procedures. Multiple threat groups have been observed utilizing native Windows tools to bypass system controls and execute commands with privileged credentials. Which of the following controls would be most effective to reduce the rate of success of such attempts? The correct answer is D. Implement controls to block execution of untrusted applications. Since adversaries are using native Windows tools to escalate privileges and bypass controls, implementing application control solutions to block or restrict execution of unauthorized or untrusted applications and scripts is the most effective way to reduce the success of such attacks. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Set user account control protection to the most restrictive level on all devices. UAC helps but can often be bypassed by advanced attackers using native tools. B. Implement MFA requirements for all internal resources. MFA protects authentication but does not prevent local privilege escalation attacks once credentials or sessions are compromised. C. Harden systems by disabling or removing unnecessary services. While good practice, this is less directly effective against attacks using built-in Windows tools that are often necessary for system operation. Therefore, the correct answer is D. A chief information security officer wants to map all the attack vectors that the company faces each day. Which of the following recommendations should the company align their security controls around? The correct answer is D. Meter attack. The meter attack framework provides a comprehensive matrix of attack techniques and tactics used by adversaries, helping organizations map and understand the full range of attack vectors they face. Aligning security controls to meter attack improves detection and defense coverage. Why the other options are incorrect? A. OSSTMM. This is a testing methodology for security assessments, not a mapping of attack vectors. B. Diamond model of intrusion analysis. This model focuses on analyzing individual intrusion events, not comprehensive attack vector mapping. C. OWASP. OWASP focuses specifically on web application security risks, not all attack vectors across an enterprise. Therefore, the correct answer is D. Which of the following actions would an analyst most likely perform after an incident has been investigated? The correct answer is B. Root cause analysis. After an incident has been investigated, an analyst typically performs a root cause analysis to identify the underlying factors that led to the incident, helping prevent recurrence. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Risk assessment usually conducted proactively to identify and prioritize risks before incidents occur. C. Incident Response Plan This is created and maintained before an incident to guide response efforts. D. Tabletop Exercise This is a simulation activity conducted before or after incidents to test response procedures, not immediately after investigation. Therefore, the correct answer is B. After completing a review of network activity, the threat hunting team discovers a device on the network that sends an outbound email via a mail client to a non-company email address daily at 10 p.m. Which of the following is potentially occurring? The correct answer is D. Data exfiltration. A device sending outbound emails regularly to a non-company email address, especially on a fixed schedule, is a strong indicator of data exfiltration, the unauthorized transfer of data outside the organization. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Irregular peer-to-peer -peer communication. Peer-to-peer -peer refers to device-to-device -device communication, not email to an external address. B. Rogue device on the network. The device might or might not be rogue. The key suspicious behavior is the device being sent out. C. Abnormal OS process behavior. The scenario describes network email activity, not a specific OS process anomaly. Therefore, the correct answer is D. 
A web application team notifies a SOC analyst that there are thousands of HTTP 404 events on the public-facing web server. Which of the following is the next step for the analyst to take? The correct answer is D. Identify the IP host name for the requests and look at the related activity. When thousands of HTTP 404 errors occur, the analyst should first investigate the source IPs or host names generating the requests to determine whether this is benign or malicious activity. This investigation informs the next steps. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Instruct the firewall engineer that a rule needs to be added to block this external server. Blocking without investigation risks cutting off legitimate traffic. B. Escalate the event to an incident and notify the SOC manager of the activity. Premature escalation without analysis may cause unnecessary alarm. C. Notify the incident response team that there is a DDoS attack occurring. HTTP 404 errors alone do not confirm a DDoS attack. More analysis is needed. Therefore, the correct answer is D. Which of the following best describes the reporting metric that should be utilized when measuring the degree to which a system application or user base is affected by an uptime availability outage? The correct answer is D. Scope. Scope measures the extent or coverage of an outage, indicating how many systems, applications, or users are affected during an availability incident. It quantifies the breadth of impact. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Timeline. Timeline refers to the sequence and duration of events, not the extent of affected resources. B. Evidence. Evidence supports the investigation but is not a metric measuring outage impact. C. Impact. Impact measures the severity or consequence but is broader. Scope specifically quantifies who or what is affected. Therefore, the correct answer is D. A security analyst needs to provide evidence of regular vulnerability scanning on the company's network for an auditing process. Which of the following is an example of a tool that can produce such evidence? The correct answer is A. OpenVAS OpenVAS is a full-featured vulnerability scanner that can perform regular automated scans and generate detailed reports, which serve as evidence for auditing purposes. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Burp Suite. This is primarily used for web application security testing, not comprehensive network vulnerability scanning. C. Nmap. A network scanner used to discover hosts and open ports but does not provide detailed vulnerability reports suitable for audits. D. Wireshark. A packet analyzer used for network traffic inspection, not vulnerability scanning or reporting. Therefore, the correct answer is A. An organization receives a legal hold request from an attorney. The request pertains to emails related to a disputed vendor contract. Which of the following is the best step for the security team to take to ensure compliance with the request? The correct answer is B. Notify the departments involved to preserve potentially relevant information. When a legal hold is issued, the best immediate step is to notify the relevant departments and personnel to preserve all potentially relevant emails and data related to the dispute, ensuring that no information is deleted or altered. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Publicly disclose the request to the other vendors. This could violate confidentiality and legal protocols. C. Establish a chain of custody starting with the attorney's request. Chain of custody is important later during evidence collection, but notifying stakeholders for preservation is the first step. D. Back up the mailboxes on the server and provide the attorney with a copy. Backing up data is part of evidence collection, but first ensuring data preservation is critical. Directly providing copies may also require legal oversight. Therefore, the correct answer is B. A vulnerability analyst received a list of system vulnerabilities and needs to evaluate the relevant impact of the exploits on the business. Given the constraints of the current sprint, only three can be remediated. Which of the following represents the least impactful risk, given the CVSS 3.1 base scores? The correct answer is A. This vulnerability has the lowest CVSS 3.1 base score, indicating it's the least impactful of the four options. 
the high privileges required, the need for user interaction, and unchanged scope all contribute to reducing the likelihood and impact compared to the others. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Base score 7.2. This has the highest score and also has scope changed, no user interaction required, and high impact on confidentiality and integrity. Is clearly more severe. C. Base score 6.4. This has a higher score than A, with high confidentiality and availability impact as well. D. Base score 6.5. Despite having no privileges or user interaction required, the impact metrics and scope change still give it a higher score than A, thus it represents a higher risk. In summary, A is the least impactful and lowest priority to remediate, based on CVSS scoring. Therefore, the correct answer is A. Which of the following would help an analyst to quickly find out whether the IP address in a SIEM alert is a known malicious IP address? The correct answer is C. Add data enrichment for IPs in the ingestion pipeline. Data enrichment during log ingestion allows the SIEM to automatically correlate incoming IP addresses with threat intelligent feeds in real time. This means when a SIEM alert is triggered, the analyst can immediately see if the IP is known to be malicious, drastically speeding up triage and response. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Join an information sharing and analysis center specific to the company's industry. This improves long-term threat awareness but does not provide immediate correlation for IPs in alerts. B. Upload threat intelligence to the IPS in Stix Taxi format. This improves detection at the IPS level, but does not help with SIEM alert correlation unless the SIEM also integrates with that data. D. Review threat feeds after viewing the SIEM alert. Manually checking feeds introduces delays. It's less efficient than automatic enrichment during ingestion. Therefore, the correct answer is C. We have come to the end of today's video. If you liked the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Goodbye.